Hi guys, my name's Robert and I'm going to be taking you through uh, Melsoft um, on Mitsubishi GX Developer version 8. Um, what we're going to do is there's going to be a series of videos on how to use the software and how to do a little bit of programming and editing. Um, first of all, I'm going to uh, show you how to start up a new project. So, first of all, we've started the software up as you can see. Uh, just take note that the majority of the buttons here are disabled. Um, we can't do anything with those until we actually create or start a new project. Um, and some of these will continue to be disabled depending on the PLC type that we use. Uh, GX Developer is very good in the sense that it does a whole series of PLCs that Mitsubishi produce. Unlike some of the other manufacturers of PLCs, Alan Bradley, Siemens, etc., that have a lot of other software or separate pieces of software for their PLCs. Um, we will be covering Siemens in some later videos as well. Uh, just to give you a quick run through here, this little button here um, basically brings that screen or that list box to the forefront or to the back. We have create a new project, open an existing project and read from the PLC buttons here. These are the only ones that are active until we actually start to create a or start a new project. So let's go ahead and do that now. I can either click on the new project button here or go to the project in the uh, file menu and we'll select and click new project. At this point a little window uh, pops up and we have to choose the, type, uh, the series of PLC that we're using. Um, in the list you'll see that there'll be some Q series, uh, an A series, an FX series. Um, the Q series are the latest versions, these are the bigger units. The A series are, um, uh, I was going to say extinct but are not used anymore. Uh, you'll still find a lot of these on people's sites but you can't actually buy the processors anymore though you can still purchase the modules uh, that connect to the CPU. The FX series is the cheaper end of their um, series and uh, limited I.O. on there. Um, so what we're going to do is make it easy. We're going to start with an FX CPU. Uh, then we go into the PLC type um, and within that series, the FX series, there are various types as well. You'll find these numbers actually printed on the outside of the, uh, the PLC itself or of course in the documentation. Um, to make it easy we'll just use a FX3UC. Um, <clears throat> now the next section here is a program type. Generally uh, uh, the FX series can only be programmed in either ladder or SFC. We're going to choose ladder today. If we did go to some of the Q series um, and some of the other series, uh, let's see if I can, actually I can use an A series. No, I can't. <laughs> but in some of the QA series, you will be able to program in the ST versions as well. But to save time and effort, we're just going to stick with the FX3. Um, this will um, uh, be disabled, you can't get into there. This part of the program here, or this little checkbox, leave unchecked. And the next section here is set up the project name. We can do this here or we can do it later over in the project um, save as, but let's do it here and then we're all ready and then we don't lose any of our program or forget to do it properly. If you're happy with the drive path, which I am at the moment, um, leave it as it is or you can hit, click the browse button and you can change that path to whatever directory you want it to be in. I'm happy to leave it into the default for the time being. Uh, the project name will give it a name of uh, project uh, underscore YouTube and there we have our project name there. You can give it a title, I tend to leave this blank, I don't really find that much use for a title. Um, however the project name that I give these uh, or give my software um, tends to relate to the job that the PLC is actually doing. So uh, the, the project name tends, tends to tell you as much as a title could ever. Once you've selected all of that and uh, filled in the blanks, then just click OK. 
uh, sometimes you'll get this uh, little message up saying that the program doesn't uh, the project doesn't exist do you wish to create a new project click yes the other uh, the other little window you'll get is that a project already exists by this name are you sure you want to overwrite it yes or no if you click no you can rename your new project in this instance I want to click yes what it's doing now is it's now configuring the software for use with an FX CPU and as I said earlier you find that some of these are now enabled these buttons at the top and these shortcuts a lot of them here aren't used um, and uh, a lot of uh, in some of the PLC some of the lower FX's if I'd chosen an FX2 for example uh, these buttons here would have been disabled these are um, rising pulses and fall impulses um, in the FX2 series you couldn't use these so they would have been disabled generally along the top here we have our contacts normally open and normally closed in our project list box now which as I said we can turn on and off at this button we have our project at the top with our name and it's also repeated at the top here in the window uh, you'll see the drive or the pathway that it is the name of it what you've chosen to program it in in the, our case ladder and that we are in at the moment edit mode and we're at main one step in other words we're at the first top of the program in our project list box here we have access to various parts of the software so for example if we click on the plus here we have main in the program under main main is what you're seeing on the screen here this is our main program this is what we're going to write our software to um, if we go into device comment um, if we then click or double click comment it will bring up this little window here this uh, this window here allows us to um, add comments to our inputs X's in Mitsubishi are inputs and uh, if I type Y0 Y's are our outputs address locations and if I type M0 those are our memories and if I do T0 those are our timers and we have counters etc and all of these we can give a little comment to to give the next person that comes to look at your software or to use your software an idea of what that timer or that counter or that memory bit or input or output is actually doing um, I do a lot of um, plant control for a chemical company so consequently we have um, a lot of valves for example so I will actually give a comment to the valve to say that it uh, belongs to a particular tank so let's say tank number five uh, and it is the outlet valve but also what I'll do is I'll use this alias here which is uh, uh, another smaller comment and I'll normally put something like the valve number which I'll get off the the PID schematics or the electrical schematics whatever and I will put a reference to the uh, drawings into that section there and then I can view these in the main program when I add my contacts from here so that's your comments always always comment your program it's okay you might know what things do but if somebody else comes along